In this lesson, we're going to learn more about arithmetic sequences, but this time we're going to look at the explicit formula instead of the recursive formula. One thing I want you to make note of on the side is that to use or write a rule using the explicit formula, we simply have to know the first term of the sequence and the common difference. If we know just the first term and just the common difference, we can actually write a rule. If you remember when we learned about the recursive formula, that formula was based on knowing the preceding term. So in that one, you wouldn't even necessarily need to know the first term. You would just need to know any consecutive terms in the sequence, and then you could write a rule. So here is the recursive formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you two. Really, this D, we're probably going to be more comfortable with it in front of the parentheses, but there's really no difference. It's the same thing. It's still telling us to multiply that D times the N minus 1. So let's talk about what everything means. A sub N represents any term in the sequence, whatever we're looking for. It could be A sub 19, it could be A sub 20, A sub 34 whatever particular term we're looking for. A sub 1, 1 obviously refers to the first term in the sequence. N would be the term number. So if I was looking for A sub 19, then I would plug 19 in for N so that I could evaluate the formula and figure out the 19th term. And then D stands for the common difference, because that's the other big thing that we need to know. Okay, so let's determine, first of all, if this sequence is arithmetic. Remember, we need to have an adding and subtracting pattern, and you'll notice that every time here we're adding two. So yes, this is arithmetic. And so we're going to write a rule using the explicit formula. And you're going to see how easy, easy, easy this is. So we would say a sub n equals, <coughs> a sub 1 is our first term. So notice our first term is 3 plus the common difference, d, was 2. So 2 times n minus 1. And that's it. That's the explicit formula. Now what I want to show you is we could take this and make it look more like the recursive rule and we could distribute the 2 so that we get 2n minus 2 and then combine our like terms and so we could also see the rule as 2n plus 1. And so this looks more like the recursive rules that we wrote the other day. So the explicit formula can then be turned into a more equivalent formula like that. Okay, looking at the next one, it says explicit, but that doesn't look like the explicit formula. This looks more like the recursive, so I'm going to change that error on my part. And it says find the first five terms and the term named in the problem. Okay, so um, if I know I want to find my first term, so that I would put 1 in for n, so 3 times 1 plus 16 is 19. So my first term is 19. My second term, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 16 is 22. Are you starting to see a pattern? 3 times 3 plus 16 would be 25. And remember, we talked about that our slope, or that coefficient on the end, that is our common difference. So we're adding 3 every time. So let's see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, the first five terms. And now if I want to find a sub 24, again, all we have to do is plug 24 in for n and calculate it. And that would end up being 88. So the 24th term is 88. 
Okay, last problem to look at together. It says, given the first term and the common difference, find the first five terms and the explicit formula. Well, we know the first term is negative 3, and we know the common difference is negative 5. So that means we're subtracting 5 every time. So negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Just showing you that common difference. And then we would get negative 13, and then negative 18, and then negative 23. Really easy, right? When we write our explicit formula, again, super easy. a sub n equals our first term, negative 3. Our common difference is negative 5. Now, we could write plus negative 5 if we wanted, or I want you to see I'll write it a different way. I could just write minus 5. So either way is acceptable, times n minus 1. And I'll show you both ways so that you can see it. Either way would be acceptable to write the explicit formula. They mean the same thing. And that's it. That's the explicit formula. I wouldn't want you to change it to any other form at this point. Take a minute. Write down any questions you might have in this column. Write down some main ideas. What are some key points that we need to look at? And then we'll, we'll, we'll be writing our summary um, in class.